For today's lesson, we're going to be looking at lesson 4.3, graphing linear non-proportional relationships using slope and y-intercept. Now that sounds like a lot. Graphing, obviously we're going to need graph paper. Linear means that our, when we graph it should be a straight line. Non-proportional just means that the line is probably not going to go through the origin. Relationships means that we're just graphing an equation. Uh, slope and y-intercept, we've been talking about that in four point, back in 3.2 and now again in 4.2. And our goals for this lesson, if we are able to get to both of them, are to graph a line when given an equation, and we want to graph that line in slope-intercept form, and then we also want to analyze the graph of a real-world scenario. So we'll start with some notes and then take a look at a few examples. In this lesson, we're going to be learning to slope or to graph using slope-intercept form. And slope-intercept form of a line is, given, is the given form y equals mx plus b. And in this equation, all, or in this form, all of these variables represent something. The variables x and y represent any ordered pair, m represents the slope, and b represents our y-intercept. Now in previous lessons, when we've been given an equation that's been written in this form, what we would have to do is we would have to make a table, we would have to substitute our values for x and for x and solve for y to get our value to get our order pairs. We would then have to plot our order pairs on the graph and draw our line going through that. It was kind of tedious and took a lot of time. With today's lesson, I'm going to show us a shortcut, a much quicker and simpler way of graphing equations when they're written in this form. So going forward, we're not going to have to make any more tables. We're not going to have to solve for y, any of that kind of stuff. All we're going to have to do is identify two key pieces of information, the slope and the y-intercept from the equation, and then we'll be able to graph it. Again, without having to make any tables, without having to do a whole lot of work. So let's take a look at a few examples and see how that's done. For our first example, we have the equation y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 1. Now as a reminder, this is written in slope-intercept form which is y is equal to mx plus b. So what we want to do is we need to identify our value for slope and our value for y-intercept before we're able to begin graphing this. We need to identify those two values. So we want to identify m and we want to identify our value for b. Now if we line up the equations, we see our y's are lined up, our equal signs are lined up, now for m, we see that the value for m is in front of the x, so our value for m in this equation is going to be 2 thirds. So that's our slope. So our rise is going to be 2, and our run will be 3. Okay, our x's line up. Now we have plus b, and we have minus 1. So if you have a negative value here, or a, sub, uh, a subtraction sign, that is part of your value for b. Okay, because up here it's positive. If this is negative, then our value for b must be negative. We can think of it as 2 thirds x plus negative 1. So that means our value for b is negative 1. Okay? So we, uh, we've identified the two values that we need to identify before we can begin graphing. Now when we actually graph, I know that we identified the slope first, but the first information we need to use is the y-intercept. Guys, write that down. The first piece of information we need to use when graphing is our y-intercept. Please write that down. All right. Hopefully you paused your video and wrote that down. So in order to start, we use our y-intercept. And we remember that to find our y-intercept, we start at the origin, and we count straight up, or we count straight down. We count up if our value for y-intercept is positive. We count down if our value for y-intercept is negative. Here, our value for y-intercept is negative. So what that means is we are going to start off from the origin by counting down one unit. And so that's where we plot our first point. So this value here, that is our y-intercept, which we got from right here. Okay? When you guys are doing these practice problems, you don't have to write that down. I just wanted to explain that this point here is our y-intercept. Now, in order to graph more points, we're going to be using our slope. 
we continue from the y-intercept. Don't go back to the origin. Continue from the y-intercept and use your slope from there. So from here, not from the origin, from here, we are going to rise 2 and run 3. So from here, we go up 1, 2, and then we run 3, 1, 2, 3. And here is where we put our next point. And what's nice about slope is that we can continue doing that. From this point, we can again rise 2 and run 3. So from here, we go up 1, 2, run 1, 2, 3. Now, you'll notice that all my points are going this way so far. Instead of going up and to the right, we can also do the opposite of that from our y-intercept again. So instead of going up and to the right, we can instead choose to go down 2 and left 3. So now we rise down and run left. So we're doing the opposite of what we did before. So rise down 1, 2, run left 1, 2, 3. Okay? Four points is plenty. You don't need to do more than that. Grab your straight edge, your ID. Make sure that your ID can connect all of the points. And then draw your line going through the points with arrows at both ends. So that is the graph for y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. If we did this problem back in 4.2, we would have to make a table Choose values that are multiples of 3 for x. Find our values for y by doing 4 or 5 uh, lines of work. And then plot our points. This method is much faster and much simpler. It might be a little confusing at first, but we just have to keep in mind that we're starting with our y-intercept. And then from each point, we're going to run to, um, rise to, and run 3. Let's take a look at one more example. Next example, y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 3. So we're going to write y equals mx plus b above it. Just so that we can more easily identify our values for slope and y-intercept. Once you've gone through a few of these, you do not have to write this down anymore. You, can, you should just be able to look at the equation and identify the key information that we need. So from this equation, our value for m is going to be negative 5 halves. Don't forget about that negative sign. That is important. And I want to encourage you to put the negative in the numerator. It doesn't matter if it's in the, in the numerator, if it's out front, or in the denominator. As long as there's a negative sign, it's correct. But if we put it in the numerator, then we remember that our rise is negative, and so we have to rise down. Okay? So our rise is going to be negative 5. Our run is going to be 2. But we don't start with that. We start with our value for our y-intercept. We have plus signs here, so that means our value for b is going to equal 3. Now, our y-intercept is where we start. If our y-intercept is 3, remember that for y-intercept, we're counting straight up or we're counting straight down. Because we're positive, we're going to start by counting up. And we're going to count up 3 units and put our first point there. Okay? B is 3, so I count up 3 units from the origin. That's where I put my first point. Now, we're going to be using our slope here to plot more points. Rise is negative 5. Run is 2. So we're going to count down 5 from this point. We don't go back to the origin. We continue from this point that we just made. So from here, we're going to go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and write 2, 1, 2. And we can do that again. Go down 5 from this point, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and write 2 again. Now, three points, those kind of take up the whole graph. We might be able to squeeze one in by doing the opposite. So instead of going down into the right, we can go up into the left. I'm sure that I'll run off my graph, but that's okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and left 1, 2. Okay? So even though that points a little bit off our graph, that's all right. And we're going to use our ID to connect our lines. I can't even connect them all with my ID. Guys, if you cannot connect all the points with your ID, don't even worry about that point that you can't connect. A line, the length of your ID, is plenty long. 
And that's it. That is our graph for y equals negative 5 halves x plus 3. Originally, I hoped that we would have enough time in our video to analyze the graphs as well. I don't think we're going to have that time, so instead we're going to just look at a couple more examples of this because this is a crucial, important lesson that we're going to need for the next couple months. So we want to make sure that we have some good examples and that we know what we're doing here. So we're going to take a look at two more examples if we have time, and then we'll call it a day for the video. For our next example, we have y is equal to negative x plus 2. Right, y equals mx plus b. Our y's line up, our equal signs line up, but for m, we just have a negative sign. Well, we need, we need values when we're using our slope. So, if there's no number in front of the x, if there's no number written in front of the x, we can imagine it as a 1. Okay? So, our slope here is going to be negative 1. But as a reminder, I would always encourage you to write slope as a fraction, especially when you're graphing, so that we can easily identify our rise and our run. So instead of just negative 1, we're going to write our slope as negative 1 over 1. And then our value for our y-intercept, we see the plus signs line up, so we know our y-intercept will be positive. And then for b is going to be equal to 2. When we graph, we start with our y-intercept, which is 2, meaning that from our origin, we're going to rise up 2 units. I shouldn't have said rise up. We're going to go up 2 units and put our first point there. And now from this point, we're going to use our rise and run. So from this point, we're going to rise down 1 and then run right 1. So from here, we go down 1, right 1. We can do that a couple more times. Down 1, right 1. Down 1, right 1. And as before, we can do the opposite of that as well. So instead of going down into the right, we can instead go up into the left. And we can go up into the left again and again. We don't need to graph that many points necessarily, but when they're all close together, it doesn't hurt to do so. Then we go ahead and take our ID, our straight edge, connect our points with a line. Make sure to draw your line going past the points with arrows at both ends. So there's the graph of y equals negative x plus 2. I think we have time for one more, so let's take a look at one more example, and then we'll be done with our video. For our last example, we have the equation y is equal to 3x minus 4. So again, we're identifying m and b. The y's line up, the equal signs line up. For m, our value is going to be 3. m is going to be 3. But we should write our slope as a fraction. So instead of just 3, our slope is going to be 3 over 1. And then our value for b is this value right here. Because we have the minus sign, we can think of it as plus negative 4. So the plus signs line up. So for b, we have negative 4. And this is going to be our starting point. So from the origin, we're going to count down because we have a negative sign, and we're going to count down 4. So we count down 1, 2, 3, 4, and put our first point there. Okay? Now from here, and again, don't go back to the origin. From here, we're going to rise 3 and run 1. So we go up 1, 2, 3, run 1. Do that again. Go up from this point now. Go up 1, 2, 3, and run 1. We can do that another time. Rise 1, 2, 3, and run 1. And we can even choose to do the opposite if we want. From here, go down 1, 2, 3, and left 1. My points all appear to be in a straight line. So one more time, using my ID, connecting all my points, and we draw a line through them with arrows at both sides. Again, I'm hopeful that this is a much easier way of graphing an equation rather than drawing a table, choosing x values, solving for y four or five times, then plotting points, then drawing a line. It's my hope that this method is going to be much easier for us to use. And we'll get to our second goal next time.